What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 146 and we start today's episode off with Atletico Madrid once again rejecting a bid for Angel Correa. However, Bayern Munich have accepted our most recent bid for Robert Lewandowski. We put it in in the last episode, £40 million and Bayern said yes, that is okay. So Lewandowski is of course out of contract in the summer. We can sign him for free if we want on a pre-contract but of course we know this is probably going to be our final season so it's kind of pointless doing that so 40 million pounds for Lewandowski that's going to be enough to hopefully bring the Polish striker to the San Siro if he accepts the contract we just offered him there so that deal right there to me is a pretty decent one I know what a lot of you guys may be thinking you know he's 32 years old he's out of contract in the summer so you know presumably teams should be able to get him for cheaper than his valuation not a few million pounds over it but what I'm looking at is this we sold a Rigi to Wolfsburg for 50 million pounds this is our final season almost likely our final season in the series we're going to get this guy who is six ratings higher for 10 million pounds less and he's 89 overall still so Lewandowski has grown ratings during this career but hasn't decreased in stats despite being 32 years old so yeah I take the point he's several years older than Origi but to me he's one of the best strikers in the world and in the game he'd still be one of the best strikers in the world so him coming to the San Siro here to, to play up top with Morata to have one of those guys on the bench possibly 88 or 89 overall you know for 40 million pounds I'm more than fine with that deal and hopefully he will accept his contract and the Polish striker will come to the San Zero so again a deal which some people may think yeah I'm not too keen on that but to me even though he's 32 years old if he's not decreasing in stats then he's going to be better than Origi you know he's got six ratings to drop before he gets down to Origi's level so for me I think that's a great deal there and I'm really happy with the, uh, the bid that Bayern Munich accepted uh, still following that our, uh, our first game of today's episode against Uden here, our first and only game of today's episode. Uh, but before that, two bids for Kovacic and Lucas Toro as we go in search of a new backup midfielder. But taking on Udinese, though, 41st and only game of today's episode here, coming on the back of that bizarre penalty shootout win over Lazio in the last episode in a Tim Cup quarter final. Taking on Udinese, we beat them by three goals to nil at their house. Really happy that win as they were flying high at that point. So to go away from home and beat them by three goals to nil was fantastic. They'll be looking for revenge here at the San Siro. First chance fell to us, but Ryan Tyler's free kick was clawed off the line by the goalkeeper. He's so unlucky from free kicks and then Montalivo's shot there coming back to play against Milan was just off target and put behind for a goal kick so still nil nil in the 37th minute though a great chance for Udinese to open the scoring and they would do so as well what a volley this was by Vazquez and the away side take the lead here eight minutes before the break this was just a really nice goal too because the cross came in we failed to deal with it and as Udinese kept the chance alive here the pass comes in I think it might have taken a slight deflection off of uh, not Donnarumma I think it might be backage actually but either way the volley by Vasquez there I mean Djokovic is a great goalkeeper pulled off some heroics in the shootout as well saving what should have been the penalty to win us the, uh, the shootout but of course Bangadino took another one for the last but uh, either way that was a great volley by Vasquez there and Djokovic had absolutely no chance but eight minutes after the restart here we will concede once again as Udinese would double their lead here and stun the San Siro and make it Milan nil Udinese 2 and this was a really poor goal to concede so the first goal was a great goal this one was just awful I mean two players got for this header here Donnarumma and uh, Verratti as well well, not exactly the tallest players going for the header, but I still expect one of them to win that in the air there. But the number six does instead, flicks it goal bound. Djokovic can't get there, and it's Milan nil, Udinese two. So in this game, back in the Serie A, desperate to get another win notched up. This was a really, really poor game from us. And so Udinese, in my opinion, were playing just as good and were full value for their 2 0 lead. But either way, in the 73rd minute here, as we were still trading by two goals to nil, we needed either a moment of magic or some real fortune, and we got the latter here. We want our was a corner I drilled it towards the edge of the area and aren't this on the postcard what is this penalty given for I mean Reid Avald a former Watford player is the guilty party for apparently pushing Rugani but I didn't really see anything there I think it was just sort of a, a little of a, a bit of an accidental collision I guess that's the best way of putting it but either way penalty to Milan we know the rules we chip it down the middle when it's a debatable one but Ryan Tyler gets the rub of the green and scores anyway so Milan won Udinese 2 back in the game also in my next se uh, series by the way I'm going to ask you guys before we start it whether you guys want me to change this rule or 
one not because it's something which I like to do and something I've done since VO14 but if you prefer me to stop doing it in my next series I will let you guys decide uh, before the series starts but uh, either way Milan won in these two but in the 90th minute here as the clock ticks into stoppage time how about this a giant throw in from Jethro Willis was flicked on by Morata and at the far post Rescal Dani off the bench had the chance to score the equalising goal and get his first goal of the season but he missed the ball with the goal gaping and it went behind so it's still Milan won in these two and all Rescal Dani had to do there is get a touch and equalise for us but he couldn't make contact so it's still 2-1 and his stoppage time the final chance fell here we won ourselves a corner everyone came forward for it including Jeremy Djokovic El Shirawi swings it in towards Djokovic Rescal Dani's diving head finds Morata who is denied by an unbelievable save by Kivrak and Udinese eventually get the ball away and the game does finish Milan 1 Udinese 2 so final score here at the San Siro Milan 1 Udinese 2 they get revenge on us after we beat them at their house they beat us at our home and unfortunately we do lose for just the second time this season in all competitions so very frustrated about that one a man the match display from Kivrak though you know the save at the end was unbelievable to deny Morata from point blank range Morata was like three yards out and he somehow managed to stop the ball from crossing the line but either way a frustrating game I thought we should have at least got a point in that one Rescal Dani missed a big chance late on missing the ball when all he had to do was get contact on it and he would have found the back in there but either way it's only our second defeat of the se season really frustrated about that our first defeat in a couple of months as well a frustrating loss but we'll just have to use it as motivation to do better in our next game but either way following that it was time for transfer deadline day and a bit of a sad deadline day knowing it's probably going to be the final one of the series but either way it's deadline day here in career mode we all love deadline day so many things could happen and the first thing we did was reject bids from a store Verdi and also meet of Nilsson as well for seeing it once again around your rejected bids for Lucas Toro and Matteo Kovacic as well but some good news here to start deadline day off Robert Lewandowski does accept his contract and will join Milan here for 40 million pounds so four and a half million pounds over his valuation 32 years years old, out of contract in the summer. Sounds like a terrible deal, right? Well, 89 overall, one of the best strikers in the world, not decreasing in stats, uh, you know, coming in for less than what we sold Origi for. Yeah, in my opinion, it's not a bad deal at all. So Lewandowski comes in here, and again, this is probably our final season. We want that extra bit of quality up top to partner Morata, go up top with him, probably even be on the bench, you never know. But uh, either way, Lewandowski comes in, and I'm fine with that, despite his relative age. He's, you know, again, it's it's, you got to look at this right right here. You may be 32 years old, but this is probably our final season in the career. Even if he does decrease stats, it will probably only be by one or two ratings. So I'm totally fine with Lewandowski coming in. And for £40 million, pounds, that's the joint second highest we've paid, along with Ryan Taller. And just before, uh, just uh, under Verratti, I should say it was £45 million. Pounds. I'm fine with the deal. But uh, still, following out new bids for Lucas Soro and Matteo Kovacic. Now, there are more midfielders out there, but these are the two I want as backup midfielders for us here. Lucas Toro, 86 overall. Kovacic, 83 overall overall both have their contract out in this summer I do believe we should be able to get these bids to uh, be accepted at one stage Kovacic put a new bid of 14 million pounds Toro for 20 million pounds as you can see though Roundy didn't like the bid for Kovacic but did accept a bid for Lucas Toro of 20 million pounds so with Kovacic you can see here they just don't want to let him go but they're okay with Toro going for 20 million pounds though and this could be an absolute steal here and if you didn't rate the Lewandowski deal I'm pretty sure you'll rate this one 26 years old 86 overall definitely glitched no doubt about that one whatsoever he'll be coming in for nine million pounds under his valuation as he accepts his contract straight off the bat it was like get me out of the burn about it got too many good midfielders here I want to come to the San Siro there's some good midfielders here as well you've got Maratti in package as well but I want to come apply my trade here in Italy and that's exactly what he's going to do so Lucas Toro comes in two deadline day uh, signings really quickly here first Lewandowski for 40 million pounds then Lucas Toro for 20 million pounds 60 million pounds in total on these two players Toro does have a one match ban in Europe as well so unfortunately he will miss one of the two ties against Real Madrid guaranteed so he'll be annoyed about that but either way he comes in and I'm very very happy with that deal he's got some really nice stats and looks really good so only a few hours left on deadline day only a couple million pounds in the transfer kitty it was looking like we were done for transfers in this season and this series as well but then I thought to myself do you know what we need someone that's versatile we need someone who's won the Champions League before we need someone who can deliver the big moments in the big occasions and Loftus-Cheek had a few in his career we all thought he was going to be a star it never really worked out but he can be Ryan Tyler's sidekick once again, he can be the Robin to Ryan Tyler that is Batman Loftus-Cheek can come back 
to us. He can come to the San Siro. I put in a bit of £500,000 plus Simon Verdi, and we shall wait and see what Stoke City say. He left Watford. Once Ryan Tyler left, he thought there's no point staying at Vicarage Road. I may as well go if my bro's gone. He went to play under Mark Hughes at the Britannia Stadium, but we want to get him back in this series. £500,000 plus Verdi is why I offered to Stoke City for the services of Ruben Loftus-Cheek. There was only a few hours left in deadline day. I had to wrap it up quickly and fortunately for us, right off the bat, Mark Hughes said, you know what? 500 grand plus Verdi, this is bigger than football. Loftus-Cheek needs to be reunited with Ryan Tyler and yourself as well. The three musketeers, there's been something that's been missing at the San Siro. We just didn't really know what it was. We couldn't win the Champions League last year. We missed that experience that Loftus-Cheek brings, having won it two times with Watford as well. So Loftus-Cheek is going to come to the San Siro. By the way, this contract here that got accepted was on the final hour of deadline day. So if I didn't do this on time, we would have uh, we'd have completely messed it up. This was the final hour when he decided to accept his contract. Loftus-Cheek comes back to us. He's here at the San Siro. He's going to be reunited with myself and Marco the Magician for £500,000 plus Simon Verdi. And I'm really, really, really pleased with this because, again, there's been, there's been something that's been missing here at Milan. I don't know what it was. I didn't know what it was at all. I was really unsure, but I think it's Loftus-Cheek. I think it's RLC. He never really worked out the way we were hoping, but he's a versatile player. He can play anywhere. I don't know how he's going to fit into this squad. I really don't. So many great central midfielders here. Maybe we'll play him fullback or striker or wherever he, where, you know, wherever he wants, basically. That's why I'm at Watford. We just moved him around the pitch where, everywhere. But uh, either way, Loftus-Cheek comes in. I'm really happy with that. He couldn't handle the pressure of being number eight at Watford either. That's when he started to decrease a little bit, in my opinion, in terms of good form. So we've given him back his original 36. He comes in. I'm really, really, really happy with this deal. £500,000 plus Verdi and the free deadline day signings have been completed. So Lewandowski for £40 million, Lucas Toro for £20 million and Loftus-Cheek for £500,000 plus Simon Verdi. In come the three musketeers, in come the three boys. Hopefully these guys will do a good job for us. We spent £105.5 million in the January transfer window alone. We spent over £200 million since we've been here at the San Siro. Don't know what the exact figure is. If anyone knows, please do let me know. I'll be really interested to know. But either way, we spent an awful lot of money here at the San Siro. This is probably going to be our final season. And I feel like it's all coming together really nicely in this series as well. Because the first player we signed in this series was RLC. And the last player we signed in this series will also be RLC. First for Watford, now for Milan. It all comes together really nicely, doesn't it? And Loftus-Cheek is in alongside Lewandowski and Toro. Let's not forget as well, free deadline day signings. And I'm really happy with the business we did in today's episode. But that is going to today's episode of Career Mode though, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. Really hope you have enjoyed it. There will be another episode of Career Mode up later on tonight. So if you could leave a like for a double episode upload day, I really would appreciate it. You don't have to if you don't want to. There's no like target. I just want to treat you guys to a double episode upload day today. So there's no like target, but I appreciate a like regardless if you enjoyed today's episode. We'll see the debuts of Lewandowski, Toro, and Loftus-Cheek in the next episode. So look forward to that, which will be coming out later on tonight. And I'll see you for the episode after the football. See you then.